friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. I'm doing, hmm, you know. So today's video is going to be one that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about and to film and to just give my opinion on. My friends Lacey and Georgia, Lacey is from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips and Georgia is from Georgia Harris, did a collaboration recently where they talked about what their makeup collection would look like if they had a realistic makeup collection. I think the idea of a realistic collection is fascinating. I don't know why I find it so fascinating. I guess because I almost feel like there's this perception. I think the camera's like way too low. Yeah, hold on. I feel like there's this perception here on YouTube that people who have big collections are just crazy. Um, <laughs> we are but like crazy for other reasons um i feel like there's this kind of stereotype that if you have a big collection you're crazy you're wasteful i think there's a small community on youtube who doesn't like beauty youtubers they like more like anti beauty youtubers which is fine like i get it um but i think the idea of a realistic collection is interesting because i understand that someone like me my collection is insane you know like it's crazy um but i do think it's kind of fun to see if I were to think of someone who doesn't do YouTube, somebody who isn't obsessed insane like I am, and just kind of buys makeup to have their like necessity makeup products that could all fit in a little travel bag, um, this is what it would be. So this is my actual travel bag. This is usually what I use. I have like a big train case when I go away for like a week or something, but if I'm just going away for a short amount of time, this is the bag that I use like a few days. Um, this is typically the bag that I bring. It holds a lot of stuff though, which is super nice. I kind of wanted to do something that they didn't do and actually tell you guys really quick the brushes that I would consider my realistic brushes. Because if you don't know, I have three gigantic cups filled with face brushes because again I'm a psycho. It works I don't like to clean brushes. Let's get started and I'm going to tell you guys realistic. I want to preface this too by saying really quick, I almost forgot. This isn't necessarily my most favorite makeup of all time. This isn't necessarily my like holy grails. I actually think I only have a couple things in here that I would consider holy grail. I tried to think as if I were a realistic I hate that word, as if I were like a normal consumer. I didn't know a ton about makeup. I only knew what I kind of saw from like beauty YouTube. I wasn't super invested, but I just wanted a few things to play around with. I was kind of inspired because one of my social work friends came over today and I was able to give her a bunch of the makeup that I've been decluttering. And it was just funny giving her like a start. She had no makeup basically, she has like nothing. And it was just like foundation and like a concealer and that was it. So it was kind of fun to give her like a full starter pack of realistic makeup. Um, and so that's kind of what I wanted to do for you guys and show you what I use. This is a little unrealistic but so many of you asked me about this brush that I feel like I need to just talk about it in a video. I'm gonna start just linking it because they, I, I get so, I swear to god I should start this brush like in its own Instagram page. Everybody freaks out when I use this brush. I use this brush for primer. This is the Real Techniques 306 Kabuki brush. I use this for primer. I could just use my hands but <laughs> I kind of like applying primer with a little really dense flat top kabuki brush. I also think this one is super reasonable. I really enjoy it. Um, I personally just feel that like using a brush gives me a more seamless application to my primer. I know it sounds weird, but I really like it. And it's also kind of a luxurious feeling instead of like aggressively rubbing your hands in. I find that when I rub my primer in with my hands, my face tends to get really red and then I have to put on the foundation and I think I'm like overcompensating. This just overall gives me a non-rough, very smooth primer application. This is not realistic. <laughs> a little bit bougie that I have this and use it but I actually got this brush through Octoly. Real Technique sent it to me so it's kind of like well I'm not going to use it for anything else so I'm just going to use it for my primer and see how that goes and I've ended up loving how the results look. I think having a really good base is really important. Having a really smooth seamless sort of base is really important um, so that's why I use this little brush but yeah this is the Real Techniques 306 Kabuki brush. The next brush that I feel is my go-to is the Morphe Y6 brush. I did get recommended this from Laura Lee. This was like her brush that she loved and so I ended up getting it because of her recommendation because I felt like it did apply. I wanted a good foundation brush and I feel like this one is fantastic. How I feel about Morphe brushes I will say I don't really like Morphe brushes. The ones that I've gotten through a set have always been terrible. I have like I had two sets of Morphe brushes and pretty much all of them fell apart. They came with like probably 10 to 12 brushes each and they all pretty much fell apart except for the eye brushes. However, brushes from Morphe that I bought with like a single brush, those have all been really, really good. So this is the Morphe Y6 and this is my go-to foundation brush. <coughs> 
I also have sponges. These are both very dirty because I haven't cleaned them yet. But I love the Beauty Bakery sponge and I also love the Sonia Kashuk body sponge. This is technically the like really big one. I like it a lot. I just use this one. That's why it's like so dirty. Next brush. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is the 101 powder brush from e.l.f. This is just a big poofy flat just a really big brush. I use this for all over the face powder. I love this brush. I think it's fantastic. I use it every, these, all of these brushes I use every single day. This one I use every single day. I really, really like it. It's just a really soft, nice, fluffy brush. Okay, this is my blush brush. This is from Real Techniques. This is number 300 from their Galaxy collection as well. Came in the same collection as this little guy. This is a fantastic blush brush because I feel like it's very soft. I have another one from Vanity Planet. I was between these two. This one is from Vanity Planet. I don't even know. The ones I got from Vanity Planet, honestly, the quality sucks. Like, this is falling off. All the ones I got from Vanity Planet are falling apart. However, I like the brushes. I just don't think the brushes are well made. Does that make sense? But I decided to go with this one because I use this one a lot more on an everyday basis. Um, I use that one when I have a blush that maybe isn't as pigmented and I need to get into more. But for the majority of my blushes, this works fantastic. I dip it in once or twice. It's very loose. It's very big. It gives a really nice, beautiful beautiful seamless type of blush that I really 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 like um so this is definitely my go-to realistic blush brush these are also all the brushes I travel with this is my bronzer brush this is from the BH Cosmetics marble collection it's number two from that marbled collection but I think you can only get this in a set it's just a really nice dome topped bronzer brush that's it's really basic I just really like dome topped bronzer brushes so that's that my contour is falling apart this is also from Vanity Planet and the reason it's duct taped is because it fell apart but this is the Vanity Planet brush it's just their angled contour brush I've, I need a new one because if you can see the edge of this I pretty much just like <laughs> into the pan of the contour and then I'm like <clears throat> and like circle it aggressively on my face so this one's kind of falling apart gonna need a new one but this is my go-to contour brush it just really gets because it's angled and it has that angle to it it gets into my cheekbones really 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 nicely so I like this brush and then I also just have this one is also taped because all of my brushes are falling apart um this is my Lexi tapered highlighting brush this is the luxie 522 i feel like such a beauty guru right now like i'm reading numbers off of brushes who am i okay this is the luxie 522 this is a my favorite highlighting brush i've ever used in my entire life all of these other brushes except for this one i love this brush but all of these other brushes i could probably replace and find other things for this is the best highlighting brush that I've ever used. It is perfectly not too hard pressed together, so it's not like crazy pigmented, but it's also not too loose like a fan brush. It's a really, really good medium density. I don't know what the word is. It's a really, really, really good brush, and this is something I use every single day for my highlight, and I think it looks good. I mean, those are the brushes that I would keep if I were to be making my makeup collection realistic, if that makes sense. The first thing I wanted to talk about is like a setting spray. Okay, so when I was picking these products, because now we're getting into like the product products. When I was picking these products, I did keep price in mind because I do feel like a more realistic makeup wearer would not spend thousands of dollars on makeup, which is totally your decision and reasonable in your choice. However, I did think there were some items that people might splurge in, just like from what I know, everybody I know owns this. Either the mini or the large. Everybody I know who is even slightly into makeup owns the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. I high key, I think it's because Jaclyn Hill talked about this so much, and I think she has a lot of influence over more realistic makeup people. Um, but either way, I know so many people that own this, or at least the mini, and have like tried this one out and really, really like it. Um, I did pick this one as what would be kind of the realistic setting spray, and I also do like this. I don't really understand the hype. Like, I just look wet, but the bottle is beautiful, and when this runs out, I'm going to keep the bottle forever. Next, I decided for primer. I picked two primers for a realistic primer, both do different things. Becca is one of those brands. Becca and Anastasia Beverly Hills were two of the bigger brands that are more, like, high-end that I was like, I feel like the girls that I know that aren't super into makeup know of these brands. Becca is one, and so I felt like the Becca First Light Priming Filter Instant Complexion Refresh 
would be something that somebody I know who has a more realistic collection would have, number one, because this goes on sale quite a bit, which I did take into account because I bought it on sale. So I was like, yeah, I would have bought this on sale for like a fun little primer. And I also think it's just a good, very radiant primer. I think being more radiant and dewy is very in right now. So I think of any girl who's a little bit more basic with her makeup would want to look really radiant and dewy with this primer. I also picked up for this the Baby Skin from Maybelline. I just feel like this is a very affordable primer. It is a dupe for the professional. Everybody says it's a dupe for the professional. Like everybody kind of knows this is probably a dupe. I personally really like this primer actually. It's very, I'm not super into pore filling stuff anymore. I actually have worked more on my skincare to make the pores on my T-zone get smaller for now. Um, but I do think when I had bigger pores and I struggled with my pores, this was a fantastic primer for me. It fills in my pores great. And I think this is something that a basic, a basic girl would go and like grab this. It's like $3.99. It's so affordable. Great primer. For foundation and concealer. So I picked the LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation. The thing about foundations is I feel like when you're kind of new to makeup, you just go to the drugstore and you just pick something. Like that was how I got my first foundation. I just went to the drugstore and I grabbed something that looked beige. And um, that's actually how I found this foundation. <laughs> um, I basically was like, oh, this is $5. Let's give her a go. Um, this and the Wet n Wild foundation. And I feel like a lot of people I know have more drugstore foundations. Most people don't splurge on high-end foundations, which honestly, a, a lot of the drugstore foundations are just as good as the higher end ones. I have a really broad spectrum of both. And I think this one is really good. This is one of my favorite drugstore foundations. It's the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD High Definition Longwear Illuminating Foundation. Again, I feel like people want to be glowy. I want that like all natural, natural look. And this definitely provides that, especially with this primer. That would be really, really good together. And then I, of course, feel like I had to pick Tarte Shape Tape. I feel like I literally didn't have a choice. I will hold up a concealer to my friend and I'll be like, do you want this? And they'll be like, is that Shape Tape? All of my girlfriends, when they ask me about makeup, somebody brings up freaking Shape Tape. I don't necessarily think this is the best concealer of all time. It's not a bad concealer. It's very drying and a little bit creasy, um, but I think paired with something more dewy, it would work well. This is just, isn't my favorite, but I think if I'm being realistic of a concealer that I would like know about as a more basic consumer, it would definitely be Tarte tar Shape Tape. Every there was a time when every single person I know was talking about this and even now it's in a lot of YouTube videos like years after its release so I think Tarte Shape Tape would be a big one then we kind of got into uh, more powders I did pick the Maybelline Fit Me powder this is actually one of my favorite powders so this was perfect but it was also a really affordable powder I've heard a lot of beauty gurus talking about this powder as a dupe for others like the Laura Mercier I don't know how much it dupes others I think it's just good on its own I don't necessarily think every drugstore product has to be a dupe for something higher end. I think this is just a fantastic powder all by itself. It has a really cool formula that I really, really, really enjoy. I have two of these because I'm scared of running out. I think this is a fantastic powder. Um, and then I also, this is kind of like a throwback. So I still have like five of these. I have one in my car. I have one everywhere. I don't even really use it as much anymore, but this is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Powder. They kind of like sold this as something that you didn't have to match your skin perfectly to. It would just match you no matter what like it would just match your skin no matter what you looked like like you could just pick a shade and it would match you which isn't true this is a little orange for me but this is just you can see I've hit major pan I've gone through probably 10 of these at this point in my life this used to be the only makeup that I ever wore which is why I felt like I needed to pick it for a pressed powder because this was my only makeup this was my foundation concealer and powder all in one back in the day um so this is something that I feel like would have to be a part of my realistic makeup collection I actually still use it sometimes I use it when I go out a lot too for like a blotting and stuff definitely not the right shade but like a good powder so I might be reaching a little with this one but I didn't have a lot of contours that I felt like people would know about but I do feel like a lot of people know about Anastasia Beverly Hills they were one of the first makeup brands that I knew about that was high-end was Anastasia Tarte and Anastasia Beverly Hills were the two that I first knew about um and I felt like this was a makeup purchase I made pretty early on into my makeup buying process was the ABH contour kit because it's kind of you can see it's like literally falling apart I've used this I've used this so much and it's like I'm hitting pan on these 
brown shades. Like, I loved this palette, and I still like it. I don't use it as much as I used to. It's a little intense for a beginner, um, or to somebody who maybe doesn't contour a lot, but I also feel like most girls I know don't contour every day. They contour for, like, special occasions. Like, the, that step is not really necessary. So I think this would be a good palette to use for, like, a night out if you're doing, like, a full beat. So yeah, I think Anastasia is definitely a brand that people are aware of. There's a couple makeup brands that I didn't, I don't think I picked anything from an indie brand. This was my first real bronzer that I bought. I saw so many people talk about it and talk about the smell. And then I was at Target one day and they had all of their Physicians Formula stuff on sale. This was like $12. And this is my fourth one, by the way. I've gone through so many of these. I love the butter bronzer. It's truly one of my favorite bronzers. It's definitely in the top three of my favorite bronzers of all time. I think it's really fantastic and I like now that they have a very diverse shade. When I first started buying this bronzer there were two shades. Now there's like six. I really give Physicians Formula credit for making a more acceptable shade range so more people could use this and I think this butter bronzer is so good. I used it today and I just feel like it gives such a nice bronze. It's not too orange. It's the perfect neutral bronzer. This fade especially. This is the light shade but it's just a perfect neutral color. It's really, 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 really nice. And for a drugstore, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's still very affordable. For blush, I felt like another major makeup brand that I knew about before I started really being into makeup was MAC. So I picked my MAC blush. I feel like I've heard a lot about MAC blushes even before I bought this blush. I feel like I knew of MAC and everyone kind of talked about MAC. There was a time when I feel MAC was the only makeup place anyone ever talked about. Definitely think that time has passed now, but there was definitely a time where like in like the two 2000s where everybody if you had like a MAC lipstick you were the coolest girl in school like you were awesome um, and I feel like a lot of people still ask me like the like I'll be like oh I do YouTube and they'll be like do you get free stuff and I'm like yeah sometimes and they're like do you get it from MAC I'm like no <laughs> No, I don't. Um, but this is MAC Peaches. This is also one of my all-time favorite blushes. This is genuinely a holy grail. If I had to like rebuy stuff in my collection, I do have a video like that where I talk about what I would rebuy if like my collection burned to the ground. Um, and this is something I would definitely rebuy. Let's talk brows. I basically picked my brow routine. I didn't really go as realistic with this one only because my, I, my brows are like my brow products are pretty curated for me. I don't have a lot of brow products. I really only have the ones that I love. I've kind of gone through and gotten rid of stuff I don't. So my brow routine is using the Benefit Precisely My Brow. I used to use the Goof Proof. I found that the Precisely My Brow works a million times better. Um, I feel like Anastasia and Benefit are really the only two places to get these types of brow products that are like fantastic, amazing, blow your mind. Like this is such a good brow pencil. To me, it is definitely worth the like 20 bucks. I actually just got this on sale for 12, which was really nice. I also would recommend the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow. While this can be difficult to work with for someone more realistic, I find combining it with a pencil, which is what I used to do when I first started doing my makeup, I combined a pencil with a pomade and that makes it a little bit better. You kind of do the pencil for the more like this part, like the inner part of your brow. And then for the more like point of your brow, you use the pomade to kind of define and deepen things. And it looks really, really good. Um, and then something I also feel like most people would have and honestly, this is something you could just have if you had a realistic makeup collection is just about a brow gel. I chose the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. This is particularly my favorite brow gel, especially one that has a bit of pigment to it. This is in the shade Dark Brown. I find that this is just amazing. You can put it on your brows and they look done. They don't move for the rest of the day. I throw this on pretty much every day at this point. Even if I'm not doing anything else to my face, I fill in my brows a little bit because it just makes me look so much better in my opinion. That is the one thing that makeup has made me insecure about is leaving the house without brows on. It's so strange. But this is something that I would highly recommend, would really love, and it's also very affordable. Next, let's talk eyes. So for eyes, I felt like, okay, I felt like I had to go basic here. So I did pick the Too Faced Chocolate Bar. A lot of people know of this palette. Um, this is kind of Too Faced's like big first palette. I know I almost picked the Peach palette too because I feel like that was big. Runaway palette was definitely the chocolate bar that started that whole series that inevitably made the Peach palette. Um, I feel like this is a really, really good, solid, neutral palette for an everyday working person. It has every color you would need to create a really nice 
basic neutral look with also a few darker colors and more fun like purples in here uh so you could create something that's like crazy for going out you know what i mean like if you wanted to smoke things up when you go out this would be a good palette for you so i felt like that was a good palette for a more realistic person but then i also felt like a person might have two and i really just felt like i had to include a naked palette i was gonna do the og naked palette but then i realized that this would be more of a neutral that person maybe wanted something a little bit more spicy this like fake person that i'm doing so i did pick the naked cherry which looks like this um i think this is more fun for someone who's maybe just starting to experiment with stuff that's a little bit different than neutral maybe some pinks i find girls who are getting into makeup after they've moved past the like i'm bored of neutral shades they go to the pinks you know what i mean all of my friends who have gotten into makeup slowly are moving into the pinks and i think that these are just really fun easy to use shades there's a lot of shimmers there's a lot of room to create some kind of fun smokier looks and also some really light neutral wearable looks i don't think this person in my realistic collection would have any sort of brights palettes or anything like that i think it would be very simple however i do think they would have some glitter this is just because I can't live without Stila glitters. So I had to put one in here in my realistic version of a makeup collection. I've always, always, always been obsessed with glitter on the eyes. That has always been my look with makeup. I think glitter on the eyes is beautiful. I love it. And so I feel like even if I was still kind of like a novice, not even novice, I feel like even if I was still not as into makeup as I am now, I would still want and love these Stila glitters. These were actually something I bought relatively when I was still kind of new to makeup because I saw a YouTuber Using them um, and I think this is something that I would utilize as far as lashes go I just picked my favorite stuff for lashes because again it's kind of curated so I have the Inglot Jennifer Lopez mask this is such a weird thing that I love the Inglot Jennifer Lopez <laughs> mascara I use it as a bottom mascara because the wand is very 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 thin perfect for my under eyes and then i also use the urban decay troublemaker mascara i know this got bad reviews and i understand why because it is a little pokey and like sh sharp like i understand why people didn't like this but it makes my lashes look unreal this is my third one and they just look unreal like i haven't been able to find a mascara the only thing i don't like about this is it goes bad really fast but i have not been able to find a mascara that is this amazing like i just haven't been able to do that um so this is definitely would be like my realistic eyelash stuff this is the two i would use one bottom and one upper and then of course my mark jacobs liner she's a little angel she's so cute we're down to a mini we're working to finish up the mini and then we're gonna work on the get another big one hopefully around the time of the sale because that would be really perfect timing um but this would definitely still be in my realistic makeup collection and I would still pay $25 for it every single time because it's so good. I felt like for highlighter, again, I know a lot of girls know about Becca highlighters. This was my first single pan high-end highlighter, and this is Becca Moonstone. Um, you can see I used a lot of it because it was my only one for a long time. Um, I still have a deep, deep, deep love for this highlighter. I think it's still stunning and beautiful. It gives us, I just remember, I said this in one of my other videos about this highlighter, but I just remember putting this on and feeling so pretty like I just felt so pretty I just felt beautiful when I would put this on and I still feel that way I think a really good highlighter is really essential to even if your realistic collection like having one good highlighter that you put on lights up your face and makes you feel beautiful I think is so essential highlight can you tell highlighters like my favorite part of makeup I just think it's essential and then I also felt like everybody was tripping out over the Anastasia Ambrisi collection and I feel like you would have like a nice more cool toned highlighter with this but then you'd also have your more gold summery bronzed goddess-esque dreams and again I feel like Anastasia is one of those brands that a lot of people know about and I feel like even though a lot of people didn't really know who Amrezy was because I didn't um people still wanted this highlighter because it's beautiful I went with basically things that I felt were popular we have Colourpop's Monday which is a really this is so they discontinued it <laughs> It's my favorite shade. It's the only shade from ColourPop that I wanted to rebuy, went to go rebuy it, they discontinued it Monday. It's the perfect orangey, peachy nude. It's perfect, and if anybody knows a dupe for ColourPop's Monday, let me know because I'll buy it. I don't care expensive. No, don't recommend something too expensive because then I'll be sad I can't afford it. But 
but I'm really sad about this. This is the perfect shade. I also feel like ColourPop lipsticks a lot of people liked because everyone said it was a dupe for Kylie. If we're talking like basic, like me, because I'm very basic, I this was the first liquid lipstick I ever bought was a Kylie one. She kind of introduced me to the world of liquid lipsticks, if I'm being completely honest, because I was like, how does she make her lips look so big? And I, of course, in my brain, I wasn't like, oh, it's filler. I was like, it must be the lipstick she's using. So I bought the lipstick, learned it was filler, learned my lips will always be extremely tiny. Still buy her lipsticks because even though some people think it's drying, I personally like the formula. I don't mind a drying liquid lipstick. It just doesn't bother me. I don't know. Um, and then finally, I decided somebody would have a really just like basic neutral pink gloss from like Wet n Wilds that they found at like the drugstore on sale. That's how I acquired this gloss. So that I feel like I can like relate to that on a spiritual level because that's literally how I bought this gloss. I was just like wanted to buy more lip gloss because it was like going to be spring. And I was like, oh, let's go to the Walmart and just pick up whatever's on sale. That's how I got this. That is my realistic makeup collection. Thank you to Georgia and Lacey for giving me this idea. I will link their videos down below. Let me know down below what you guys would include in your realistic makeup collections. Like what, you, as some of you probably have very realistic makeup collections. Tell me if there's something you would want to add to that. Tell me if there, you feel like you're good. Like, let me know how you guys feel about your makeup collections right now. It's interesting having this all sit in front of me because I definitely think this is makeup that would last me like a while. Like I feel like I would be fine with this amount of makeup, but you know me, I'm crazy. I like variety. Um, this amount of makeup is totally normal and reasonable. Even less makeup than this is totally normal and reasonable. Your makeup collection is specific to you. It is your coin you're spending to get it. Uh, nobody else should have input on that. So <laughs> I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was fun to listen to me ramble about makeup. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!